Welcome to Stormworks. One of the things I've always wanted to create in this game is a sky fortress, so I did. It's a little buggy, but it's a lot of fun. This is called the Hydra. It's intended for heavy combat operations against an unlimited number of AI opponents. You can get on it by uh, just grabbing that harness, then you can come over here and get whatever weapons you want for your vicious one-man war against the entire AI army, and you can get right back off. Getting on and off of a helicarrier like this is so much better than trying to land it. You can just park your helicarrier above, say, a mountain, wherever you need to be. Of course, at some point you're going to want to fly it, that's what all of this up here is for. We have eight rotors, which gives us plenty of get up and go so that we can get into the air and get moving. Our forward speed is pretty standard for helicopters, but our real strength is our ability to change our altitude rapidly. That's how we dodge. Well, this is intended for combat against an unlimited number of AI enemies, so dodging is going to be an important part of that process. You dodge by gaining altitude. It's literally the best way to dodge. But how about if we wanted to go on the offense? What sort of options do we have there? Well, we got some guns. The most notable one is this one up front. This is our manual turret. It has four heavy auto cannons. Oh, we're using heavy auto cannons because everything in this game is vulnerable to heavy auto cannons. You don't need anything bigger. These heavy auto cannons can take out enemy cruisers at three kilometers range, and that is, frankly, just fine. There's no need to have anything bigger or more long range than that on this kind of vehicle. Using the smallest possible effective uh, weapon also allows us to carry tons and tons of ammunition, which we do. So, you know, that is the basic idea. Uh, we also, however, need to be able to defend ourselves from aerial attacks, which I'm bringing up now faster than usual because we have a, a, a bastard in the sky, so we're going to turn them on. These auto turrets will automatically fire on anything that counts as a radar target, which obviously includes helicopters and aircraft. Your job when you're in an air battle is to dodge. They will start to fire at us at some point, and uh, we need to make sure that we are not going to get hit, because while we can take some flak damage, we cannot possibly survive the kinds of damage that we would take from rocket hits. So. We need to make sure that uh, any sort of attackers that are actually firing at us don't hit us. And we can do that by changing our height, gaining altitude. The only issue is that that guy is not actually trying to attack us at the moment, which means that uh, we're not hitting him. Our, our turrets are geared towards attacking people who are coming at us, and he's not. He's attacking something else at random. He will eventually come back around to try and attack us, and we will blow him out of the sky with our turrets. But it is something you have to pay attention to. You can't simply ignore the enemies and hope for the best. You do have to make sure that you are able to, uh, you know, dodge. Now, we're back in our gunner seat because I happen to see over there we have one of these bad boys. In our gunner seat, we can actually control the entire vehicle. We are not limited to just controlling the turret. This allows us to do sweeping operations like we're doing now. We've spotted an enemy. We're going to go over and blow that enemy up. Now, our, our auto turrets will target things on the ground. In fact, we can point them at the ground if we please. But in this case, we don't want to get that close. One of these ships might be a flagship, and the flagships are very dangerous. So we wanted to... Well, apparently they blew themselves up. Okay. Uh, the only thing that can hit us from the ground at this kind of angle is a flak vehicle. But we are very vulnerable to them. So we want to be sure to run away and fire at range if we do see a flak vessel. In this case, however, it looks like uh, something went wrong and they blew themselves up. So we are scot-free. We'll just continue on our way. Oh! I think that was us glitching out and shooting at ourselves. I don't believe that there was an enemy that was firing at us. 
let's go ahead and point us at the ground. And we will allow our auto turrets to clear this island in case there are any tanks. I don't happen to see any. I don't think there are any tanks on this island at the moment. Um, there are... Oh, there is one. There. Are, see, got it. Uh, they will also fire at things that are not enemies because they fire at anything with a radar presence. As you can see, there are a ton of things with radar presences. None of those are um, probably enemies. They're mostly boxes, random things. But uh, it is something where... Uh, they are very handy, so although they will not be able to easily target uh, just enemies, they are very effective when you do need to target things. It looks like we took a hit to our altimeter. Oh, no, wait, we're in the... Sorry, my bad. We are in the uh, the wrong seat. We are... We didn't take any hits to our altimeter. We are in the gunner's seat, which doesn't have the ability to change altitude. Let's sit over here on the navigation seat. The navigation seat is where we're going to be spending most of our flying time. This is where we can most effectively dodge any incoming uh, an incoming fire, but it's also very handy for actually maneuvering. Over here you can see our altitude. If we drop our altitude down to less than 100 meters, we'll be able to just get off. And that's going to be something that uh, is what we want to do when we are above an island like this. So we'll just... Bring it down to something like that. And uh, park ourselves directly above our objective, which is that white van down there. There we go. Now, our auto turrets will not discriminate. They do not understand the difference between a target that they're not supposed to shoot, a player that they're not supposed to shoot, and actual valid enemies. So in order to survive our foray, we're going to want to shut off the ones that are pointed at the ground like so. We took some damage. You can see our main turret took some hits, so we'll just um, weld it all up. Oh, I'm already got, I've already got a welder. Just weld, 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 weld. Just run your welder over anything that seems like it's damaged. When you stop hearing a click, you're done welding. Make sure to grab the uh, the camera arm down here. And I think that's it. I think we are all welded up, right? Yeah, so up we go. And uh, now that we are within range, we can go out back. Just check and make sure that you do in fact have the, uh, the, the retrieval uh, tether deployed because you do not want to get off and then not be able to get back on. We'll just head on down like this. There we go. Just drop ourselves off on the ground. You can bring some grenades with you if you think you're going to run into any sort of significant resistance. This is what an objective looks like in this game. It takes about three minutes to capture for reasons that are unknown. I'm not going to sit around and force you to watch that. Uh, and then, of course, when we're done capturing it, we can just get on the retrieval tether, which is where exactly? What is it doing? Oh, it's up there on the platform. Well, that's a little awkward, but it's okay. The retrieval tether also has a very bright light on it in case you uh, lose it in the dark. That's the basics of operating the vehicle. Over here in the back, you can see that, we'll just go over the interior now, you can see that we have more uh, specific control over every individual turret. While we're in the gunner's seat, we have the ability to turn them all on and turn them all off, but while we're here, we can do them individually. These screens show their current status and what they can see. Back here, we have access to these heavy autocannon drums, which we can use to reload them or repair them if they take damage. Uh, here we have access to the turrets themselves, so that we can repair them if they get hit. Here we've got some rooms. We've got medical and bunk. And then up here we've got our main control area. 
Up top we have the ability to go outside and just take a quick little peek at whatever needs to be fixed up here. While you are on top of the vehicle, keep your feet firmly planted. Do not jump, you will die, for reasons that should be obvious. If we needed to repair this guy over here, we can't reach him. Well, not a big deal. Now we can reach him. Zappity zappity zap. There are a few glitches to be aware of. One of the glitches is that these lower propellers don't have a collider attached to them. This is a glitch. I'm sure that it's going to be fixed at some point. But that means that if you take damage to a lower propeller, you're not going to be able to repair it effectively. The upper propeller works fine, and you can, in fact just operate using the upper propeller, so I wouldn't worry about it too much. Uh, it should still work. We can repair the tail by coming back here. We've got two tail rotors in case we take a hit. And uh, yeah, that is more or less the entirety of the ship. If you're trying to get off here, you can either actually try and grab that staircase, or you can just run straight at this. Boop. So let's talk a little bit about damage control. You can see we took some hits here, nothing significant, nothing dangerous. Um, everything aboard this ship can be repaired while the ship is in flight, including the main turret, as you saw. But what happens if a rotor takes a hit? So let's go ahead and grab ourselves a pistol. Do we have pistols back here? We should. I forgot to stock pistols. Oh, well, that means I've got to actually drop the welder, which is just an annoyance because it clutters up the world a little bit. That's fine. We'll just take a guns. Let's go up front. This is where we're likely to be in combat. What happens if these bad boys take some hits? Well, now we have to go and get ourselves a welder, so let's ditch the gun. Uh, and look, there's a welder. Notice that we can survive even when one of our rotors doesn't work. That's kind of the point. We are going to be taking a lot of flack, and that means that we are going to want to be able to continue to operate even when we are severely damaged. You can see we've got a tank down below us. We can take care of that just either manually or by letting the auto turrets take care of it. They're pointed at the sky right now, which is the only reason this tank is still here. Uh, but we could point them at the ground if we wanted to. It's just a toggle. Here it is, see? But the reason I didn't want them pointed at the ground is because they have a tendency to fire on anything that happens to be a radar contact rather than just enemies. Uh, I was hoping that we would see some enemies in the sky because that's where this game gets um, challenging. So one of the things about this game that was very difficult for me, uh, the enemy AI specifically, is that the, uh, the aircraft are almost impossible to hit using manual controls, manual turrets. You just can't track them very well. That's why I built these automatic controls, the automatic turrets. They will take out the enemy while we dodge, and that, that works great. It works great as long as you can find some aircraft, which uh, apparently we can't. It's always random as to which enemies spawn in, unfortunately. Keep in mind, if you are fighting aircraft, they will be firing rocket salvos at you, and those can take you out in one salvo. So if you do happen to decide to try and take on aircraft, you need to be on the ball, and that means that you need to be in the navigation seat. This one. You do not want to be in the gunner's seat if you're not trying to gun. Pretty basic. Uh, changing altitudes is the number one way to dodge incoming rocket salvos. You just go above them. So uh, it's not as hard as you might be expecting. It's actually quite easy, but it's something you have to be on the ball for. They will, in fact, make mincemeat out of you if you just hang around. That is not true for the enemies that we're currently looking at, which appear to be more tanks. Uh, most tanks cannot hit you if you are in the sky and at range. They will be able to hit you if you uh, go up close or go directly above them, but while you're at range like this, you can usually pick them off without having to worry about whether they can even hit you back. Oh, I missed.
they can fire at you, but they will not be able to hit you unless they are flak vehicles. I think I mentioned that already. I'm not having any luck. We're way far out. This is why we have control over the ship. We can go a little closer. You need to be a little careful not to get too close, though. Um, the, the closer to vertical your angle is, the more likely they'll be able to hit you. Now, against naval ships, that's not a big deal. They cannot fire straight up. But most of the tanks in this game are glitched, and they are able to fire straight up, even though it shouldn't be possible. Ooh. That's actually quite a remote enemy. Um, we're zoomed in, but as you can see, even at this range, it's a little hard to spot them. There's one. There, yeah, got it. And I'm pretty sure there was another one over here somewhere. Uh, there's two, actually. But you can see how hard they are to spot. That's going to be even harder if you are, for example, at night. But if you are at night, you can turn on X-ray, or rather night vision mode, which actually makes it a lot easier to see what you're doing. So if anything, this is better at night operations than day operations, just because you can actually see what you're looking at. The fog effect is missing at night. I say that, but of course, maybe it's not at night. Maybe it is in the wind and the rain. With fog even in the day. You can see how poor visibility becomes rather rapidly. We can't even see what's going on. But what we can rely on is our radar. So we'll just turn on our good old ground attack um, helpers and we'll fly on over. Now the enemy AI is not affected by weather. They will continue to fire at you even if the uh, weather is bad. So you will have to, um, you know, Take a couple of bullets if you're uh, going in and you didn't see an enemy and they happen to be able to shoot at you. But usually you're going to be okay unless you happen to just just hang around in a hail of um, attacking fire. It looks like we got some attack chopper. Let's see if we can blow this attack chopper out of the sky. Maybe that's not an attack chopper because it's just kind of hanging around. It's not coming at us, so it's a little difficult for us to hit. It's fine. So you can see that this is an all-weather vehicle. It is perfectly capable of going anywhere you need it to go, in any weather, and taking on any number of enemies. As before, however, uh, you need to be sure you understand whether you're in the gunner's seat or not. In this case, for example, um, I was trying to change altitudes while in the gunner seat, which is not going to work. It's shooting at cargo, which probably means it's out of useful targets. And you can hear it glitched out and shot itself. It happens. So we'll just lower ourselves nice and tidy and we'll just bring ourselves close to the objective like this it looks like we have a couple of uh, spawning in bad guys they will spawn in right under your nose there is no uh, range requirement so uh, you know it's good to leave the um, uh, the guns on if you plan to be out and about but they will also fire on your objective so there is a balance to be had. The way I do it is I just manually turn off the ground-focused guns. Well, we are uh, a little bit spinny. I think we hit something. Like, I think we actually bumped something. What did we do? We didn't bump anything, but I think that we took some damage. That's okay. Damage is something that, that can be survived. And then, of course, we can just get off and go back down and get our objective, even in this kind of weather. Grab some grenades if you think you're going to have to take care of some tanks.
and so on and so forth. I think I've given it a proper demonstration. If you want to play with it, it is available in the workshop, so just grab it and have fun. Uh, keep in mind that the game is quite glitchy, so you're likely to run into some unusual glitches. I've tried to put in a lot of defenses to avoid making that, um, you know, happen too much. But it's still going to happen. It's a, it's a glitchy game. See you around.